Thanks for staying with us now. If you're just tuning in, we're discussing prison breaks in Nigeria and the impact on our security architecture. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. Or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. All right, so good evening, ladies. Waze is now on YouTube about two weeks. <laughs> Oh, we are so sorry at day to enjoy your program we in the diaspora can only be connected via social media like youtube we're sorry for the break in transmission um why is our government not engaging in a joint task force with other neighboring countries to deal with the insurgency this was among the current administration uh, political manifesto during the election campaign what's shehu gume um, i think maybe saying sheikh gumi rather doing in abia kuta with obasanjo we have to be wise and smart with the old men playing joker cards. I mean, uh, well, I don't know if it's linked to what we're talking about, prison breaks, you know, but the truth is, um, I think I had mentioned earlier about, you know, Inam Dikano saying something about, you know, it is, nobody deserves to be in prison if people yeah. are being reformed and all of that. So it's possible that, is it possible? So let me go to you, Dr. Um, Ohamye. The, 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 this prison brace, can it be linked to politics? Can it be linked to the political, um, what's it called? You know, p politics is brewing towards 2023 right now. A lot of, um, everybody's um, positioning themselves for 2023. And usually, you know the way Nigerian politics is. They always use thugs. They always use all of these things. So is it possible that all of these things that is happening, like a build-up towards 2023, is it, can we link it to that? Okay, thank you very much. You see, like I told you earlier, these are our challenges. I can really trace it back to 30 years before now. And um, if we look at our political terrain, I would like to liken it to the European Premier League. I would like to liken it to our financial industry, our banking industry. Because sometimes I see my account officer is working in First Bank, the next day he tells me he's in UBA, he's in Zenit Bank. I see our politicians too. The first thing you will see is for a politician to change um, membership and all his supporters follows him to the other party. The next day you hear that he's buying tickets for the, another party again. And it happens most times among the two biggest parties, the PDP and the APC. So before you know what's happening, the guy that committed crime, criminal activities, fraudulent activities in party A, pops up in party B, who is in power and the power and the immunity protects him and before you know what's happening he's popping up again to another party so if we like to if we want to liken this thing to um politics i think we'll be distracted we'll be distracted because the insecurity that we have currently in nigeria affects the totality of the citizenry both the poor and the rich. You know, so many of the senators, legislators, they can't go to their houses anymore. They are holed up in Abuja. So many of them cannot try the Abuja Kaduna Road to their villages. So if we want to look at it from a political angle, I will, I will advise us to, to, to resist that, um, that temptation because politics in itself right now has become an embarrassment to those people that call themselves godfathers, to those people that call themselves the, the agitators in Nadeko and those times that they were fighting against the military. They came out from that fight and they remain violent, as if there is another party to fight against. And right now, as I speak to you, it is the astuges that are springing up surprises. So remove politics from it kindly and assure yourself that we are not proactive and we have failed to provide the dividends of democracy. Okay, go ahead, your comments, uh, Jennifer. Okay, so I have a comment from Benson. Benson says, good evening, Ways. Without food, life is not secure. Without security, food production is threatened. Quality and sustenance of life is directly dependent on security and safety of any nation. 
Safety and security is a protector that assures all forms of prosperity. Sadly, in Nigeria, the consequence of this weakness is already apparent in the pains and woes experienced by her citizens. This is from Benson. Okay, so let me, you have a comment with you, then you can ask your question. Sorry, I can't see that at the moment, but can I just go on to my question? Go ahead, please. Okay, is it possible that, um, when you were talking about politicians and all that, another thought came to my mind, that is it possible that this, because these attacks are highly coordinated, so is it possible that very high, you know, high profile inmates are also, you know, compromising the system? Did he get my question? Okay, I think. Are you um, there? You know, they have to mute him because of the, um, while he's trying to come back, I'll get to him to answer that question. So there's a question or a comment. Prison breaks, um, these prison breaks are one too many. Government yeah, must be sure. proactive. You cannot always be reactive. That's from Haruna. Um, Jennifer, I think you have some more comments with you. Yeah, um, there's a comment on our YouTube page, Mark Osse. He said, why so much checkpoints in South, South and West and East and in the Northern where Boko Haram and terrorist headsmen are ravaging, there are no checkpoints. Why? Really? I think there are checkpoints there as well. <laughs> but let me hear you. Um, you were going to answer Lamy's question. Yes, but I didn't get the question very well. Oh, I don't let, me come again. let me come again. Can I take it again? Yes. Okay, I said, is it possible that high-profile inmates are coordinating these attacks? High-profile inmates? Yes. Because if you look at the attacks, they are very, very sophisticated. Okay, okay. Yeah, let, let me tell you one of the, the challenge that we have that created this kind of um, trained and coordinated um, military um, practice. You know, we have abused our security agencies. We have abused them to the point that they carry bags for our wives when they go to the market. We have abused our agencies to the point that they are working to carry our children to school. We have abused them even when we are in a hotel. You will see some mobile policemen outside because one big man is in the hotel. You know, so we got to the point where their motivation, their encouragement, their job structure, there was, there was um, destabilized countenance. So many agency personnel started to resign from the job. Do you know how many soldiers, can you remember the story as a journalist, where soldiers decamped from active service in the Nigerian army? Yeah. Do you know how many policemen dropped their uniform after the NSAS? After that NSAS, I've been saying that we have not helped the situation to heal the wounds for the agency. For the armed forces alone, do you know how many veterans that are suffering, that they are, they are, they are, they are, there is something they call debarment allowance. It's supposed to be paid to you as a military veteran. It will stop you from using your skill against the country that trains you. Now, the army has not given that priority. As I speak to you, young soldiers that left the army, they were not paid the department allowance. So you can't hold them responsible for using their skills, which is the only thing they have. So right now, my dear, we have a lot of fully trained and, and skillful um, criminal elements in the society. People that were, were once in one agency or the other. And you know, because after service is not comfortable, so many people, uh, military generals, they come back to do politics. They come back to ask for positions in the government. What about those that can't get position in the government? What about those that can't have legitimate things to do like I am doing right now? Do you think if I am frustrated as a special forces personnel, what do you think I'll be doing in my village? Right okay, but, but uh, Dr. 
Doctor, the, the question Lamy really asked was around inmates, not so much of, you know, security personnel, like inmates, like high network inmates that are inside the prison orchestrating some of these things. But you know what, because we are running out of time, Jennifer has one last question to, to ask. Okay, so doctor, um, I'm going to come from the angle of documentation. Is that proper documentation for the inmates? Uh, I mean, they've all escaped as we speak, but is there, do they have like an account stating the number of inmates who were properly sentenced and those who are still awaiting trial? If we go to the prison now and then we're asking for somebody say, okay, we need um, Chiamaka something, is there um, a document stating that this person was detained here, this person was sentenced, and for this particular crime? Hmm. Can they be yeah. accounted for? I, I believe that they have those records. Let's look at the Benin um, prison break. You know that a lot of them have been recovered from the society. Okay? So I believe that the correctional centers, they have those records. And um, if they make them available, a lot of um, um, systems is in place to recover those people from the society. Okay. But to, to chip in the, the correction on the other question is that in Nigeria, if you have drug cartels, they are parents in detention. If you have political agitators in detention, if you have certain persons that are heading ethnic position and they are agitating against a sitting government in detention, such persons, like in America, we have what they call the Guantanamo Bay, you know, such persons should be put in a place where the security apparatus is at the highest level. So if we have certain persons like that, in a prison, a correctional center that will be work over easily, then it's an oversight from the from the correctional center um, officers. So I, I agree with her, and I agree that there are some persons that are in detention. Let me also add that there are some criminals that were being taken to court, and the Black Maria was attacked on the road, and they were set free. So you can see that certain criminals that are high profile could also attract an attack on the prison and uh, the correctional center. Absolutely. Thank you so, so much, Dr. Ohidevye, for your time with us um, this evening. We've really had an amazing time. Thank you so much, Doctor. All right, so Lamy. Thank you. Lamy, did you get your final question, the, the one um, from the WhatsApp, or I should just help you take it, then I hear your final thoughts. Okay, so we need to be really worried about security issues. I'm just sad that the basic duty of government is security, and here we are. That's Udwak from Abia State. Then I think you have one last yeah, one. Yeah, there is a comment from Wurola from Festac. She said, I fear there is more to these prison breaks. We really have to wake up and start looking at the political class doing their jobs. Absolutely. Then Benson has sent in another comment. He says, the welfare of the agency is central to all issues we face today as a country, not House of Assembly welfare, which is political. Thank you so much, Benson, and thank you to everyone that co co uh, contributed. So, Lamy, let me just hear your final thoughts on this, because tomorrow we're actually going to continue security, but we're talking about it from the angle of um, um, what Ade sent, the Sheikh Abaka Gumi's visit to Obasanjo, yeah. and what um, Inam Dikano, the IPOB leader, is saying about, you know, that uh, nobody deserves to be in jail if all these people are being rehabilitated and reintegrated back in the society. In the society. So everybody should be free to come. We say because of that, you now use one crime to, to cure another crime. But let me hear your final thoughts, Lamy, on this, then we can now wrap up. Okay, my, my final take is <clears throat> the judiciary have to has to sit up because they're also complicit in this matter. Where you find, you know, that many people, seventy percent of, I, I don't have the data, but quite a number of people who are currently in prison at this moment, and they are mass suspect. You have them there ten years, twenty years. What do you think if you think that their parents or their family members will have access to such, you know, coordinated attack? Don't you think they would do it? So I think that the judiciary should also, also help in this matter. Mm. They need to decongest the prison. Absolutely. Set people free. If especially if they are just misdemeanor, you know, if they are just misdemeanor or they they should, there are some people that don't even need that. to go yeah, into those places. True. Yeah. True. How about you, Jennifer? I actually you agree with yeah. yeah. 
I agree with Lamy 100% because every time I think of the prison, I think of um, the number of people who are actually innocent and have been there for a very long time and they've not been tried. Um, I know, um, I think, I keep referring back to NSAS because it brought a lot of things to limelight and where people said, oh, that they not realized that when they found out that one of their brothers have, or sister have been missing for a very long time, they were probably Absolutely. Yeah, in the prison. <laughs> All right, so Mark O'Shea is still saying on YouTube, he says, why is Nigeria finding it hard to create a um, state policing? I mean, this is the question we've been asking, we keep asking, but we're going to continue the conversation on security tomorrow. We, we'll still keep this, because this is actually a hot topic. All right, so Waze was birthed from the need to inform, inspire, and influence lives towards action. And this year, we started our CSR focus on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. So if you're a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you're a job seeker, keep watching Waze and follow us on all our social media handles, as this will be an all-year-round engagement. So tell your friends to keep all eyes on Waze. Thank you again, ladies. Thank you to our guests. All right, so in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. At the end of the day, the goal are simple. The goals are simple. Safety and security. That's all we're asking for. So we'll see you live tomorrow. As I said, we're going to be discussing security again as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.